For the longest time, the Shadow Assassin armor set has been known in the Skyblock community as the best early and mid game armor set, both inside and outside of dungeons. This is because of its versatility, cheap pricing, and effectiveness, making it seemingly the best option to go for. However, Shadow Assassin isn't the only option for early and mid game. In fact, other alternatives such as the Dragon sets have some stronger benefits in a lot of areas. This begs the question, is Shadow Assassin really all that good? The goal of today's video is to test all of the meta early, mid, and late game armor sets outside of dungeons to see which ones are actually worth buying. I'll be comparing their requirements, costing, survivability, damage, and general versatility to determine which sets you should get your hands on. So with all that being said, let's get straight into today's video. To get things started, I'm going to quickly go over the plans for today's video, and then I'll cover all of the armor sets that I'll be comparing. Today's video will focus entirely on non-dungeon content, meaning that I will be doing all of my tests outside of dungeons with very little consideration of dungeon gameplay at all. As a result of this, I will have a follow-up video to this one two weeks from now, where I will compare the best dungeon armor sets instead. I also want to talk about comparing mage sets in today's video. Since this video is primarily focused on comparing armor outside of dungeons, I will not be covering any mage gear to keep things simple. Most Skyblock players don't play anything that isn't melee outside of dungeons, since melee setups are the cheapest and the easiest to use. Typically, you're not going to want to play mage outside of dungeons until you get your hands on a Necron's Blade, and once you have reached that stage of the game, you'll already have a good grasp of what armor sets and gear you should be using. Lastly, I also want to briefly touch on the strongest non-dungeon armor sets, the Kudra sets. While these sets technically are the best and can even be beneficial to early and mid-game players, I almost never recommend them for players that aren't yet in the late game. This is because these armor sets cannot be dungeonized and used efficiently in dungeons, meaning that you'll have to spend extra money on a completely different set for strictly dungeon use. This obviously isn't cost efficient at all, so until you're in the late game with many more coins to spare, I would strongly suggest using an armor set that is useful both inside and outside of dungeons, and that's the armor that I'll be covering in today's video. Needless to say, now that we've got the plans for today's video out of the way, let's just jump straight into the first proper segment of this video, what makes a good armor set? Before I cover the factors that make a good armor set, I'm going to quickly cover all of the sets that I'll actually be comparing in today's video. These armor sets will be the full unstable dragon set, full strong dragon armor, full superior dragon armor, and the main combinations of shadow assassin armor that utilize the zombie knight chestplate or the tarantula helmet. I will also compare these sets to Necron and Frozen Blaze, with some minor discussion about the Kuja sets later on in this video. However, now that we know what armor sets I'm going to cover in this video, what actually makes a good armor set? How do we define if something is worth going for or not? This just comes down to five main factors. The cost of the armor set is very important in determining whether it's worth it. Its requirements and how easy it is to obtain also play a big role. The survivability the armor set provides, the amount of damage that the armor set will give you, and how versatile the armor set is. It's always important to cover multiple factors that aren't just survivability or just damage, because even if an armor set provides the best health in the game, if it doesn't deal enough damage, then you're going to struggle greatly trying to tackle harder mobs. As a result, now I'm going to move on to the next part of this video, which is all about costing and requirements. To get these comparisons started, I'm going to begin with the cheapest armor set on this list, the full Unstable Dragon set. Unstable Dragon armor typically costs around 1.5 million coins, and it has a Combat 16 requirement to actually use. This is both very cost effective and easily achievable requirements wise, making it the perfect beginner armor set. Similar to the Unstable Dragon set, the Strong Dragon set is another very powerful early game armor set. It tends to cost around 2.5 million coins instead of 1.5 million coins, and it also has a Combat 16 requirement to be able to use. This set is also an ideal beginner armor set, but due to it being slightly more expensive than Unstable, the rest of the comparisons in this video will determine whether it's more worthwhile to pick Unstable or Strong. 
Moving on from the Strong Dragon set, another powerful early game setup is the Three Quarters Shadow Assassin and Zombie Knight Chestplate combo. However, a less talked about but more powerful variant of this is using half Shadow Assassin for the leggings and the boots, and then a Tarantula Helmet paired with the Zombie Knight Chestplate. To keep things simple for this video, I'm going to call this particular setup the Mixed Shadow Assassin Armor Set, and this setup tends to cost you around 7.25 million coins. On top of this, it also has a Spider Slayer 4 requirement for the Tarantula Helmet, as well as a Floor 5 Dungeon Completion requirement, and depending on where the floor the Zombie Knight Chestplate is dropped in, you'll also need to have a certain Catacombs requirement to use the Zombie Knight Chestplate too. This is substantially more expensive and more difficult to unlock than the previous two armor sets, and due to these much more complex requirements, this isn't a combination of armor you'll be able to use in the very early game. That being said, another armor set that I'll be comparing in this video is 3 quarters Shadow Assassin with a Tarantula Helmet. This set tends to cost you around 18 to 20 million coins, and it also has a Spider Slayer 4 requirement, as well as a Floor 5 Dungeon Completion requirement. The requirements won't be an issue assuming you were using the mixed armor set beforehand, but the cost is definitely much pricier than anything else I've currently mentioned. Alternatively, you could just use the full Shadow Assassin set instead of a Tarantula Helmet in the Helmet slot, but you'll be missing out on extra damage without much gain from the full set bonus, so typically, you're better off going for a Tarantula Helmet. However, an alternative armor set to full Shadow Assassin is the full Superior Dragon set. This armor set also costs you around 20 million coins, but it only has a requirement of Combat 20. This means that you can get your hands on Superior before you even touch dungeons at all, making it much more easily achievable than Shadow Assassin at a very similar price point. That being said, the rest of the comparisons that will be completed in this video will determine which of these two sets is better for their pricing and requirements. The next set that I'll be comparing in this video is Necron's Armor. Necron's Armor is far more difficult to obtain than all of the previously mentioned armor sets, costing around 45 to 50 million coins and having a Floor 7 Dungeon Completion requirement. Just like Shadow Assassin, it is recommended to use a Tarantula Helmet with Necron's Armor as well, so theoretically, you also have a Spider Slayer 4 requirement to use this setup. And then for the final main set that I'll be covering in today's video, we have the Frozen Blaze set. Frozen Blaze costs around 30 to 35 million coins, and it has a Combat 22 requirement, meaning that similar to Superior Dragon, you can actually get your hands on this armor set before you even step foot in a dungeon. However, even though this armor set costs 30 to 35 million coins, the only reason it's so powerful is because of the synergy with the legendary Blaze pet. If you factor in the cost of this pet, the Frozen Blaze setup ends up costing you 80 to 85 million coins at its cheapest, and 120 to 125 million coins if you buy a level 100 pet straight up. But now that I've gone through the costing and requirements of the main sets I'll be testing in today's video, now let's hop into the next set of comparisons, survivability and damage testing. So now that I've covered all of the costing and requirements of the armor sets in today's video, I figured I'd jump into Skyblock now so I can do all of the damage and survivability comparisons. To do this, I've gone ahead and grabbed every single one of the mentioned armor sets to test in this video, and then I've reforged them, enchanted them, hot potato booked them, and done everything I need to to actually use these. In terms of how I've enchanted, reforged, or hot potato these sets, these three middle sets, Unstable, Strong, and the Mixed Shadow Assassin, all have the same enchants, reforges, hot potatoes, and all of that, because these are the three early game sets that are most accurate to compare against each other, while these two are more of the mid game sets, and these two are more of the late game sets. When it comes to the more mid game sets, I did go ahead and recom all the pieces, and I have slightly switched up their reforges as well, because this is a little bit more accurate to a mid game player compared to the enchants and all the reforges of these sets, which is more accurate to an early game player. And then similar to the mid game sets, I've done the same thing with the late game sets. These two sets are slightly better than the mid game or the early game sets, because once again, it's more accurate to a player who'll actually be able to afford this stuff, rather than keeping everything identically the same. Because of this, I do have a Tarantula Helmet catered towards the supposed early game players, and I also have a Tarantula Helmet that I'll be using on the Frozen Blaze set, the Necron set, 
and the Shadow Assassin set. So if you want to have a look at the enchants and all the stuff on this helmet, feel free. As for the damage testing, I will be using this specific Shadow Fury in all of the damage tests. The reason I didn't go with a weaker weapon for the early game sets and then like a decent weapon for the mid game ones and a stronger one for the stronger set is just because I don't want to introduce too many variables into the testing. So I figured I'd keep the exact same Shadow Fury for all of the left click damage tests to make things a little bit easier. And the final thing that I should mention about all the tests in today's video, if you would like to see the profile that I am testing on to compare the stats to your own, feel free to look up my username Modern Soldier on Skycrypt and select the orange profile. Alternatively, you could just go to the description though because I have left a link to that in the description below. But with all that being said, to start us off with the survivability tests, I'm going to equip the Unstable Dragon Armor to test this armor set first, Go over to the skyblock menu and then check the health values, which as you can see, this setup gives us 2117 health as well as 819 defense. These two values end up giving us a total of 19,455 EHP, which surprisingly is actually identical to the Strong Dragon set. The reason the Strong set and the Unstable set give the exact same EHP values is because they're both Dragon sets with slightly different other base stats, with the Unstable Dragon set giving you more crit chance and the Strong Dragon set giving you a little bit more strength. As a result, the damage test between these two sets is what's going to separate them apart, not so much the EHP tests, and of course the costing is another thing to factor when we do determine which of these two sets is better. That being said, next up on this list is the Mixed Shadow Assassin Armor set, so if I equip that, go to the Skyblock menu and check the stats, we get 2232.5 health, as well as 788.2 defense. This brings our EHP values up to 19,829, which is only a 1.9% increase from the strong or the unstable sets. Considering that this armor set is five times more expensive than the unstable set and roughly three times more expensive than the strong set, a 1.9% EHP increase really isn't that big of a deal. So the damage tests are what's going to have to separate this armor set from the previous two, as well as the costing and the requirements we determined earlier. Moving on from the mixed Shadow Assassin armor set though, now I'm going to test the three quarters Shadow Assassin and the Tarantula Helmet combo. So if I equip this and then check the EHP values, we get 2,535.5 health, which is definitely slightly higher than the previous two, but we only get 671 defense, which brings our EHP down to 19,549. Now this is actually really interesting because this armor set can cost you anywhere between 18 to 20 million coins, as well as having some pretty hefty requirements, but it really isn't that much better than strong or unstable with a less than 100 EHP difference from the two. In fact, the mixed Shadow Assassin armor set actually provides you with slightly more EHP than the three quarters Shadow Assassin and Terrain Tarantula Helmet combo, but this is definitely due to the Zombie Knight chestplate that I'm using in this video, which is a perfect quality roll that was obtained on floor 7. That being said, moving on to the full superior set now, if I do the exact same tests as before, this armor set doesn't give us too much health at 2384.6, but the defense is slightly over 1,000, bringing our EHP up to a whopping 26,346. Now this is a massive EHP increase. From the regular 3 quarters Shadow Assassin set, this is a 29.62% EHP increase, and if you ask me, that is a very substantial amount. Once again though, we haven't tested the damage of the superior set just yet, but looking at the requirements being easier than Shadow Assassin and the pricing being very similar, so far superior seems to be the better option. Moving on to the 3 quarters Necron and Tarantula set combo, once again checking the EHP values of this one, we get 2568.5 health as well as 770 defense, which puts our EHP values up to 22,346. Now this is actually pretty interesting because Necron is much more expensive than the full superior set, yet it doesn't have anywhere near the amount of EHP. But once again, we haven't yet tested the damage values, so I'm not going to say too much about that right now. And then last but not least, we have the 3 quarters Frozen Blaze and the Tarantula Helmet combo. If I go ahead and equip this without a Legendary Blaze pet, the EHP values that we are granted with is only 17,606, which realistically, that isn't very good, especially when the Unstable and Strong sets are better. 
However, like I already mentioned in this video, if you do go ahead and equip a level 100 blaze pet, which is the reason this armor set is actually good, if we go ahead and check all these values once again, we're getting 2,224.4 health with 1,214.5 defense. These are some very impressive EHP stats, ending up with 29,240 EHP total, which is much more than the Superior Dragon set and even more than full Necron. However, a very important thing to note about using a Blaze pet with the Frozen Blaze set is because we are factoring a pet into the survivability calculations, you can theoretically use something like a Blue Whale to buff your Superior, your Shadow Assassin, or even your Necron armor set. So if I equip an EHP pet, switch back to the Necron set and do the exact same calculation as before. The Necron set actually gains far more EHP than that of the Frozen Blaze set, but once again, I can't say too much for certain because we haven't done any damage tests yet. As a result, I've made my way over to the graveyard now to get some damage tests on these zombies, and in order to do this as accurately as I can, I'm going to equip the armor set of choice, followed up with a damage pet to go along with it. Now the damage pet that I'll be choosing for today's video is just this level 100 with a skeleton pet because it's cheap, it's effective, and it's something that a lot of players can easily get their hands on. Keep in mind that depending on your budget, your needs, and whatever else you use on your profile, you might be using a different pet to me which could influence how much more or less damage you deal. For the sake of this video, I will be using the Wither Skeleton. And now that we have that covered and out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and equip the Unstable Dragon Armor first up here, head over to a zombie, and we should be dealing about 109,000 damage. Now just to make sure these damage numbers are accurate, if I hit another zombie, we are still dealing 109,000 damage, and just for good measure here, we're still dealing 109,000 damage. And now we have Unstable out of the way, moving on to the Strong Dragon Armor set, we are dealing about 140 14,000 damage. If I go ahead and verify that one more time, we're still dealing 114,000 damage. So already you can definitely see there's a slight damage difference between the unstable and the strong dragon set. So I'll definitely talk about that in the later sections of this video to get you guys an idea of which one is more worth buying. Moving on to the mixed shadow assassin, zombie knight chest play and tarantula helmet combo though. If I go ahead and get a hit on a graveyard zombie, we're dealing a whopping 134,000 damage, and just to make sure that was right, we're still dealing 134,000 damage. So already, even though this mix set is five times pricier than the unstable and three times pricier than strong, it definitely has a stronger damage buff, but the EHP is still lackluster as well as the really complex requirements. Moving over to the superior dragon set now, if I do the exact same tests as before, we're dealing 143,000 damage per hit, and then once again, still dealing about 143,000 damage. This is an obvious improvement from the mixed armor set, which you would expect as this armor set is more expensive. So in order to test something a little bit more fair, let's move to the Shadow Assassin armor set, which is roughly the same price. This armor set is dealing roughly 156,000 damage per hit, and once again to verify, still dealing 156,000 damage. So interestingly enough, even though the superior set is far better EHP-wise compared to the Shadow Assassin set, the Shadow Assassin set does deal more damage than Superior, which is another factor that I'll cover later in this video. So that being said, now I can move over to the 3 quarters Necron and Tarantula setup, where once again, we're dealing about 166,000 damage, which I'll just verify one more time, we're still dealing 166,000 damage. No surprises there, the Necron set does outperform Shadow Assassin and Superior, but it is over double the price, so what else would you expect? Testing it against something a little bit more fair this time, if I go ahead and equip the 3 quarters Frozen Blaze set, and I equip the Legendary Blaze pet as well, this armor set deals a whopping 180,000 damage, and just to verify this, we're still dealing 180,000 damage. So just to quickly recap all the damage tests that I've just done, Unstable and Strong are very close to each other with a small gap in damage in favor of the Strong set, while the Mixed Shadow Assassin set is definitely much stronger than both of these sets, being roughly 18% better than Strong and 20% better than Unstable. Superior Dragon Armor then beats the Mixed Shadow Assassin set, with Shadow Assassin beating Superior by a slight amount, and then this is beaten by the Necron set followed up by the Frozen Blaze set. 
Now, once again, I do want to mention that the Frozen Blaze set is a roughly 80 to 125 million coin option, while Necron is at the maximum only about 70 mil if you include the Wither Skeleton pet. So it is more expensive to get Frozen Blaze, but Necron does allow you to use a better pet if you are able to afford it. But with that being said, that concludes all of the survivability and the damage tests of this video. So now I'm going to move on to the analysis section of this video to determine which of the armor sets are better than one another. With the survivability and damage tests out of the way, now I can start to determine which of these armor sets are worth buying and which ones are a waste of time. To get things started, let's talk about the unstable and strong dragon sets. These armor sets are incredibly similar, having the same requirements and the same EHP values with very minor price and damage differences. The strong dragon set is approximately a million coins more expensive than the unstable set, but that extra million coins you spend will get you a damage increase of 4.39%. However, what I haven't covered yet are the other base stats of these two armor sets, most notably Unstable Dragon's boosted crit chance and Strong Dragon's full set bonus. If you are an early game player that uses the Aspect of the End as their main damaging weapon, then the Strong Dragon set is going to be much stronger than the Unstable set. This is because Strong Dragon Armor has a full set bonus that adds 75 base damage to the Aspect of the End, making it over 50% better than Unstable if this is your main weapon. In fact, Strong Dragon Armor is better with an AOTE than the Mixed Shadow Assassin setup, but obviously, when you inevitably upgrade out of the AOTE, you will lose this benefit. As a result, I wouldn't really purchase Strong Dragon Armor for the set bonus, but this is something to keep in mind before you pick your set. On the other hand, Unstable Dragon Armor has really high base crit chance, making it much easier to reach 100% crit chance without a god pot or any other fancy buffs. As a result, for really early game players, you might want to opt for Unstable to constantly hit those stronger critical hits. Similar to Strong Dragon though, this perk does become obsolete once you're able to reliably hit 100% crit chance without the use of this armor, so it's only something you'll have to take advantage of in the very early stages. As a result, I think it's safe to say that both the Unstable and Strong Dragon sets are perfect candidates for early game players, as they're both effectively equal in terms of pricing, requirements, strength, survivability, and versatility. The Mixed Shadow Assassin setup is where things start to get more interesting, because this set is almost 5 times more expensive than Unstable and 3 times more expensive than Strong. It also has far more difficult requirements where you need to have completed Floor 5 of the Catacombs, unlocked at Catacombs 14, and you also have to be Spider Slayer 4, so you have to have been doing some Slayers at this stage. For such a drastic increase in pricing and requirements, you do get an 18% damage increase from Strong Dragon and a 21% damage increase from Unstable, but your EHP increases by less than 2%, and that's assuming that the chess play that you use is a perfect quality one like the one I was using. If the EHP increase was more substantial, then this mix setup could easily be a worthwhile upgrade to go for, but since the only real benefit to this is the approximate 20% damage increase, you're definitely better off spending your time and money elsewhere. Not only will you not have to complete Floor 5 or reach Spider Slayer 4, but you'll be able to gain the same 20% damage increase by purchasing some talismans or some weapons, some enchants, some pets, and so on. The final point that I also want to mention about this mix setup is that once again, the quality of the Zombie Knight chestplate is really important. In all of my testing, the chestplate that I was using was dropped on Floor 7 and it has a perfect 50% quality roll but if you don't have the required catacombs level to use a piece like this one, then the piece that you do end up using isn't going to be as good and thus will affect your EHP and your damage. As a result, this does make this setup a little bit more awkward and less desirable, so all in all, I think it's better to stick to Unstable or Strong Dragon for a little bit longer and upgrade other areas of your profile if you're looking for a damage increase. That being said, the next setups that I need to cover are Superior and Shadow Assassin. Both of these armor sets are very similarly priced, but it is important to note that Superior is slightly cheaper to max out because Dragon Essence is cheaper than Wither Essence. Shadow Assassin is also much more difficult to obtain, requiring a floor 5 dungeon completion compared to Superior's Combat 20 requirement. As for armor set versatility, Shadow Assassin does allow you to swap out 
any pieces you'd like for different reasons, allowing you to use golden heads in dungeons or the tarantula helmet outside of dungeons. Superior on the other hand doesn't allow you to have that same flexibility, but it's so strong with the full set bonus that you never will need to swap out any pieces for whatever reason, because once you are able to use the really expensive stuff like a Warden Helmet, you're not going to be using Superior Dragon anymore. Its full set bonus is also a major benefit for your average mid-game player, because not only does it grant great survivability and some excellent damage, but you also get extra intelligence, speed, magic find, pet luck, and other stats that might benefit you throughout Skyblar. If we focus the EHP and the damage stats of this set though, this is where things start to get pretty interesting. Shadow Assassin without a doubt has a pretty solid damage increase over Superior, being an almost perfect 10% increase. However, Superior has just barely under 30% more EHP than Shadow Assassin, which is far more drastic than the damage difference that Shadow Assassin provides. Trying to gain back that extra 10% damage that you lose in Superior is much easier than trying to gain back the 30% EHP you lose in Shadow Assassin, as general damage upgrades are much more plentiful and readily available than EHP upgrades. Additionally, the 10% damage difference tends to make a fairly negligible difference in DPS, while the 30% EHP loss is usually the reason why some people struggle to tank certain mobs and bosses. As a result, while Shadow Assassin is a very solid damaging armor set, its awkward requirements and lack of EHP place it behind the superior set. Moving on to the Necrons and Frozen Blaze set, it's evident that these are definitely the late game options people go for. At a price point of 50 mil and 80 million coins respectively, these are far more expensive than anything else on this list. Necron's armor deals more damage than every other set that isn't Frozen Blaze, as well as having the third highest EHP numbers. Superior does have 16% more EHP than Necron, but this generally isn't a big enough decrease to cause survivability issues. The damage increase of 15% that Necron provides is more than enough to make up for this, as well as the fact that you do have that versatility being able to swap out different helmets, because at this stage of the game, you definitely do want to be looking into something like the Warden's Helmet. As a result, this makes the Necron's armor set a definitive upgrade from Superior, but as far as how it compares to Frozen Blaze, things are a lot less straightforward. For starters, Frozen Blaze is very evidently the best setup in this video, just based off of my testing. However, it is important to note that the legendary Blaze pet that I used adds a huge amount of value to the Frozen Blaze setup, bringing the cost to a minimum of 80 million coins and a maximum of 125 million coins. This is more than double the 50 million coins of the Necron set at its worst, and even if we factor in the price of the level 100 Wither Skeleton that I use, the Necron set only ends up being 68 million coins total. If you wanted to opt out for more EHP instead of damage, you could use a Blue Whale instead, and if we factor in the price of a level 100 Blue Whale, it still doesn't reach that 125 million coin threshold that the Frozen Blaze set does. Versatility comparisons are also very important to note here. If you do choose to opt for the Frozen Blaze set, you are completely locked out of doing the Mythological Ritual event, since you will have to give up the Blaze pet for a Griffin pet instead. Additionally, when you inevitably progress through Skyblock and gain more coins, upgrading into an Ender Dragon or Golden Dragon will force you to switch to Necron, since this set is better with either of the Dragon pets. However, you can obtain Frozen Blaze before doing any dungeons at all, so if you avoided dungeons and wanted a powerful late game setup after the Superior set, the Frozen Blaze setup is a good alternative and it can be dungeonized in the future. If you have been doing dungeons at this point though, then it is likely that you'll already have a Floor 7 completion by now, so Necron's Armor will be a cheaper, more versatile set to go for if you want to do both inside and outside of dungeon stuff. Overall, Frozen Blaze serves as a better setup to the Necron's armor in the earlier late game stages of Skyblock, but once you're juggling hundreds of millions of coins and making much more expensive upgrades, swapping over to the Necron's armor set will be better. So then, which armor should you buy? What upgrades are worth going for, and which ones should you skip? From what I can see, starting out with either strong or unstable is purely just personal preference. From my own experience, I've had really good success with unstable, and I tend to go for it because it's slightly cheaper and easier to get your hands on faster. If you are willing to work a little bit harder and don't need that extra crit chance though, Strong Dragon is a great set and one that I can recommend. 
From here, I'd suggest upgrading into Full Superior, completely skipping the weird Shadow Assassin mixed armor set. This is because you can get your hands on Superior before touching dungeons at all, saving you money on carries or time spent doing dungeons. Even though Superior is a pretty big jump cost-wise, you won't be needing anything before Superior to complete all of the early game non-dungeon content. The next upgrade I'd make from here is definitely just general profile maintenance. This includes upgrading your talismans, getting the right pets, upgrading your weapons, and leveling your skills, because this will help buff the strength of your superior set, and it's something that you'll have to do regardless if you want to play this game efficiently. I wouldn't suggest upgrading it to Shadow Assassin since it really acts like more of a downgrade than anything, so you might as well just keep what you've got. Once you're nearing the early late game stages, that's when I'd recommend jumping to Frozen Blaze. Even though you can't do the mythological ritual with it, this is the stage of the game where you'll likely be running dungeons often alongside the non-dungeon content, and Frozen Blaze is a top tier dungeon and non-dungeon option before you can afford one of the dragon pets. If you're able to afford Frozen Blaze, then you'll also likely be able to afford a good enough setup for the mythological ritual if this is something that does concern you. However, once you do reach the very late or end game stages of Skyblock, that's when I'd upgrade into a Kudra set. Since this video is focused on non-dungeon content, having a good Aurora or Hollow set paired with Terra and Crimson are all extremely important as upgrades from Frozen Blaze. These sets won't help you inside of dungeons, but by this stage, you'll have more than enough money to afford a good dungeon setup, which likely will just be Necron's armor since you should have a dragon pet as well. This way, you'll have both an excellent dungeon and non-dungeon setup, so you'll be able to perform exceptionally well for both areas. And with that rough progression model complete, that's going to be it for everything I had for this video. Hopefully you did find this video useful, informative, or enjoyable in some way, and if you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to this channel. I'd also like to remind you that I will do a video just like this one in two weeks from now, but with a primary focus on the dungeon aspect of this game rather than the non-dungeon aspect. But with all that being said, that's it from me today, and I'll catch you all in the next video.